Welcome to today's video guys. Uh, we're kind of at a weird little standstill with a car and not really able to get it to the point where we want to just because we're waiting on one little piece to be modified for the clutch setup. But in the meantime, Marcus today is <laughs> working on intercooler piping, Yay. which is coming out nice. I'm sad with hesitation. <laughs> I was just, just going to make a joke about how it's pointing framing right now, but I know you, I know you got it taken care of. So. Hopefully, maybe there's some possibility the car will start in this video, but I don't know, depending on what goes on this weekend. One thing that I was working on a bunch last night, cutting up my door panels. I started off by going and trimming very little to where the uh, cage kind of fit right in the little door pockets, but I ended up having to just cut the whole thing off, which looked better. So today, what I'm gonna do, uh, Sean has a spare set of door cards. This one's mine, but he has the other side. And I'm gonna make lower panels out of ABS, as well as trimming some carpet. And then Sean made me the guinea pig for the door panels, so he's now the guinea pig for the rest of the interior. Since your cage, so yeah, so Sean just got his car caged by Bell too. You guys knew the plan, but yeah. is that Bell you're on the phone right now? Uh, no. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, Lee, <laughs> big monster guy. Yeah. Hey, what you want to say for the vlog, Lee? You're on the vlog. Lee just came over vlogging. Uh, hey, what's up, guy? Go check my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> but anyway, Sean's cage doesn't have any paint on it, so he's uh, he's fitting stuff up, which will be better than me scratching up my cage trying to figure it out, and then we're just gonna go back and forth, fit our carpet in, get some full interior S chassis ripping around. One thing with S chassis, you all probably know this by now, but if you're ever tuning, you will not usually, wow, it's going on my hair. Uh, you usually have voltage drop issues throughout the chassis wiring. The fuel pump might only sit like 11 volts. That translates to a huge difference with the uh, volume of flow. So typically, I was gonna walk you guys through popping a little relay in and wiring it through the car, uh, literally just taking power from the battery and then having the factory fuel pump wiring trigger it. And then as I'm doing that, I'm bugging Duarte from Drift HQ asking him a bunch of things I need. I found Dieschworks actually sent me a kit that they make. Um, that's gonna make life a lot easier. Everything's all nice and boomed. It's got a ground terminal, it's got a power terminal, and it's got a nice ready to go relay holder. So this is gonna save me a lot of time. It's gonna look a lot nicer than what I was gonna do. All right guys, I f***ed up. We powered through, tried to get the car started because I wanted to have it started early to make sure there's no issues. Sure enough, there was a massive issue. Uh, we started the engine. It sounded not so great. So then we started again made two little weird clicking noises, which it also made when I was turning it over and I was thinking it was something with a timing chain. Should have checked the head and I didn't. And sure enough, it started sounding like it didn't have compression in two cylinders. Pulled the valve cover and the woes of the rocker arms. So we've got some metal damage in here. This was the built engine. I do not trust this thing anymore. Head's gotta get pulled, cleaned out. Maybe even reassemble the bottom end if it pulled metal through it. That valve is probably bent. You can see there's a little bit of scoring on the brand new cam. Not a fun situation. My theory of what happened, um, I was rushing. If you guys remember, I explained that I didn't do dual guides in this engine. Uh, the machine shop just didn't have time to get them done. And I was quickly trying to throw them back in while Johan was also working on the clutch. We had multiple people working on the engine. It was right here. I was kneeling over it like a little baby. I checked all the rockers to make sure that they were all seated properly. But what I think happened, and f*** you Sam for cursing me with this because he literally hates rocker arm stoppers and I think when I was putting the rocker arm stoppers in I was rushing, the cams obviously weren't seated all the way and I think when I pushed them in I probably knocked two of the rockers slightly off although Sean, when we first started turning it over it sounded like it had all four cylinders, you agree? Yes then So maybe, but maybe what, maybe what happened is it, uh, it knocked one of the shims sideways or something Regardless, I wanted to abandon ship. We were weighing the options of swapping heads and keeping this bottom end, but I think the easiest and simplest thing to do right now is you should throw the stock motor back in this thing with the head gasket and bolt head. It's a bummer, but it's what happens when you rush. I took my time with the other engine, but 
trying to get this thing done, I learned my lesson and no more rushing for me. Now I'm gonna pull this thing out and swap everything over. 8500 with your factory tune, and I'm always at 8200 on that thing and never having an issue. So hey, real that's with stock valve drain, so. Real, real quick, can you just apologize to my YouTube channel for my engine? No, I'm, I should be saying I told you so. No, I'm sorry. That's what a <laughs> friend does. Friends don't let friends use rocker stoppers. <laughs> but yes, I'm sorry for maybe potentially causing you some bad karma. <laughs> Yo, Sam, it's a head of that guy. <laughs> All right, I now, listen, guys. listen. I booked your <laughs> to flight, threw a head in your suitcase. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, that sounds good. Camera's dead, no too lazy to grab another battery. I got everything swapped over to this engine. Uh, used my depression from this stupid thing to fuel my ambition. Uh, I pulled the head off this one to see if there's any damage, and sure enough, if you look on the top of cylinder number one, the valve did hit. However, it's so minimal that I might just try being ghetto and just sanding it out instead of rebuilding this whole thing. I can barely feel it with my fingernail. I'll get an expert opinion on it, but hopefully I'll just clean up the head a little bit and then this one will be good. But trying to get this one back in the car today. Ray just primered it. Um, it's going to get painted soon, but we got to get this thing running so we can go get tuned because we are falling behind. But we know it runs. We know all the wiring is good, so that's nice. I don't remember if I went into detail, but we are running Wiring Specialties Pro Series Harness. Simplifies everything. Plug and play just like stock. It looks beautiful and we're able to get it basically modified to suit a couple different sensors and things just to keep everything nice and clean. Apart from the retainers getting damaged, um, it doesn't look like there's much wrong with the head. There's a little bit of scoring on the cam that I can just barely feel with my fingernail, but they can pol probably polish that out no problem. Um, so kind of got lucky. Maybe you can call it that. Oh, big film. Time lapse, dude. Oh, I can say whatever I want. Yep. Nothing will make it into the video. <laughs> Who's doing the honors? And we got Adam. Should I start and see what happens? I think so too. So. I think it's that's probably a little bit retarded. Probably need to advance a little bit. I'll try turning it while it's running and see what it does. Okay. All the way to the other one. Okay. So it needs it's one tooth closer this way. All the way this way. It's about to start. Which is how I put it about. What? Well, which is how I put it in. Here we go. Send it. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. Yo, that hurt. Yo, it's right. Yeah. We good now? Uh, I mean, we can try. Should I, you want me to just heat my hand there? It shouldn't piss oil out, right? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Sounds like the idol's a little Now we can I'm sleep going on that. home, boys. It's two o'clock. We gotta help Chloe with her now. We got a couple hours here, dude. All that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds nice though. Yeah, no. it sounds smooth. Yeah, I can't believe you did that. Yo, I can't believe he's got all the cylinders in there.
Technically speaking, this is the last day to get the car mechanically sound before it goes in the dyno. There's a lot that's got to get done. We're bleeding the brakes right now. Johan's finished up the downpipe. Uh, I'm stoked for you guys to hear what this thing is going to sound like with the exhaust. I still have no idea what this manifold's going to sound like. And it's exactly I haven't how... been sleeping a lot, so yeah. I'm, I'm feeling great. <laughs> I'm falling apart, Michael. <laughs> Can I release? Yeah. Steering wheel ain't coming off. Thankfully, we have no windshield. Let me demonstrate for you. <laughs> You're going to bend that thing, dude. Oh, no, 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 what? no, no. What? I just moved the column down. I think oh. the column's this. Can we not? How, how do you plan to get this out? I'll put a steering wheel puller on it. That's some <laughs> yeah. You're gonna up the hub. Please just stop. It's almost out. It's just literally cheaper to... Not key. Damn, this steering wheel is bent as Yo, it's literally cheaper to remove your windshield than it is to buy a steering wheel puller. Real talk. Uh, you're doing that, that steering wheel going on the golf cart. I mean, I'm down. Yeah. I swear, like, I don't think there's replica Vertex wheels, but this has got to be one, because it is the flimsiest wheel I've ever seen. They are. There are? All right, this is not a real Vertex wheel. Look at this. Ready? Yeah, that's it Might as well bad. be made out of Play-Doh. Honestly, it's probably been in, like, eight accidents knowing the history of this car. <laughs> oh, my God, it's hecka bent. Oh, yeah. Dude, look at this. <laughs> Yo, look at this. So, Yo, on. You see that? It's like a bus steering wheel. Bruh. I'm trying to straighten it back out. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me right now. It's good now. <laughs> Stop. Yo, Sean, fresh wheel for your SOT. Match the car. I'm literally trying to straighten it back out. Yo. stupid but they literally changed the game for me you can rent them at AutoZone it's a radiator pressure tester so you can use you can put like I don't know 18 pounds or whatever your cap is rated at in the system and you can find leaks that you wouldn't have found until the car gets hot at the track and oftentimes I've had cars overheat because they build up air in the system but you can't spot the leak until it's so hot and if it's like pissing on a manifold or something the water will evaporate before you can catch it so usually what you do is pressurize the system look underneath the car see if you have any drips if not you're pretty much good to go You're like, look, feel that? Where's that coming from? This line? Ten millimeters. That's a good spot to from. I can probably take that out and land there. That's about 20 pounds. Should be more than the cap has. See anything with the turbos or anything? No. Yeah. grabbed a PRP coil kit for uh, the engine. I was gonna do VQ coils, but then I changed my mind just because of the fact that I got the wrong ones and the PRP kit looks really good. Conveniently enough, uh, we are now stocking a bunch of PRP stuff. It was a pain to get before, but as part of an expansion plan, Drift HQ has a ton of PRP stock. Everything from billet oil pumps, block braces, coil kits, trigger kits, you name it. I got the little relay kit wired up for the fuel pump. Uh, just finishing it up. I I think I'm gonna leave the rear interior out of the section of the trunk just so everything's serviceable in case you need to like quickly diagnose something, power probe, whatever. Um, it's always nice to be able to get a fuel pump easy versus hiding it up here, tucking it somewhere hard to access. So I got this going on and then I'm gonna put some little nice plugs on the other side of this guy. So if I ever gotta pull this top hat off, it's easy. What's up everyone? We're over here building another F-15. <laughs> Get on the long exposure. 
Oh, yeah, Who's long exposure. No, I mean, Mark was I'm still sitting on the job, baby. Check me out. Skirt! <laughs> Yo! That's my breaking point. Oh, he's making me scream like oh, Don't beat right over here. You need to do a boost leak test. Really important on a MAF car just to make sure that the engine is actually seeing the air that the tune is adding fuel for. So, made a quick little one out of PVC. Uh, very easy, you just need a little Schrader valve from a car, a wheel, or whatever. So, that's cake. But, it's probably gonna slip off of this. So I'm gonna drill like a little hole that I can put a bolt through just so there's a little nub that a clamp can hold on to. this video um, we are almost about ready to tune the car yeah we are going to tune it making a thousand horsepower on this stock ass SR20 big little turbo <laughs> all right we're about to do the first startup with a new exhaust uh, for simplicity's sake, uh, since this car is kind of like a factory car, I was able to get a titanium Tamera and then Johan made me a sick three and a half inch downpipe. Uh, something I wanted to do on my S13, um, but didn't really have the space or time. So it should help quite a bit with uh, maybe a little bit on spool up and just not having as much back pressure right after the turbo. Although this thing isn't going to make that much power, you usually get a cool sound of a big downpipe. You see big gains on newer cars too. so. It can never hurt to have too big of a downpipe. No big downpipe. You were in the titanium. You know, those are gonna go in the mud and all that. Yep. Yep. I was just thinking to myself, it would have been funny if, like, rather than saying you don't want fingerprints running as much as you don't want, when we sell it, you don't want them to have our identity. Oh, well, that's right. Yeah. Big brother. If we sell the exhaust with fingerprints on it, then they'll know who we are. Yo. They'll come back and get us. You can sell it on eBay. I'm excited to hear what this thing sounds like. I still have no idea what this manifold is going to sound like. Look. Yeah, because it has a muffler. Look at my dump. I'm listening to blocking. Now we got Johan. He's yeah. saying. He's saying. Yo, purrs. He's a little more idle. It's nice. It's got a nice sound to it. It starts just like my S13. <laughs> Talking to you. Yo, that sounds sick. We're about eight, about hit ten. It's fluctuating. Eight, so 10. then it's it's a little retarded. I hate you know people give me and saying that in the comments, but that's literally what it is. It's the correct terminology. It's a little bit not advanced right now. Uh, I'm super appreciative of everyone helping me out. And it was a really shitty situation that I used to fuel just a little bit of craziness to try to get this thing back together in time to still make it on the dyno tomorrow, bright and early. And mechanically, engine sounds good, which is a huge relief. Uh, now I just gotta kind of do a quick eyeball alignment to make sure it's safe enough to run on the dyno. And then after it comes back from the dyno, Ray's gonna spray the body, 
final assembly, we got a day to put it back together, and then Hyperfest. The plan and the goal with this car was to debut it at Hyperfest, and it may look pretty far away right now, but it's pretty close to being done, and I'm excited to see this car kind of come together. Um, I kind of feel bad that the whole entire car has kind of gotten compressed into a very small amount of videos, but at the same time, like, we've just been cranking out on this uh, car, and my camera's dead, so. That sounds so sick. That's a It's like a bus yeah. steering wheel. Bruh, I'm trying to when steer it back out.